You know guys, first impressions, when I saw the poster for the Predator Prey movie, it kind of looked to me like a tiny human being was jumping through the air and about to attack this skyscraper tall monster, okay? I mean, you gotta admit, okay, people out there don't really know the Predator that well. And somebody that doesn't know the franchise would probably think that this is like a Godzilla-sized monster epic. Hey guys, Ken here from the Retro Toys Capades channel in Malaysia. Now, last weekend saw the big return of the Predator to screens. Except that this time around, it wasn't to cinema screens, but direct to streaming. And I think that in places like America and stuff like that, some other territories, it was released on Hulu. Uh, in places like Malaysia, where I'm from, it was actually released on Disney+, Plus because we don't have access to a streaming service like Hulu. Uh, so yeah, a lot of people all over the world watched it. Prior to going into the movie, there was like this intense build-up of hype okay the hype surrounding this release was so monumental it's like i couldn't go on social media without seeing some posting or some line of commentary or some review talking about how immensely great this movie was now guys, honestly, I've been a Predator fan since I was a kid in the 1980s. I have never in my entire life seen this much of interest being drummed up around a Predator movie release. Never. The Predator is a franchise that I think that has shown incredible resilience okay it is something that just cannot be killed throughout the period in the 90s where there was actually no movie product out there the line the franchise itself survived the character was very much prominent through an incredible series of comic books that were released from dark horse and also through video games a toy line from kenner all this was actually being put out there even though there was no product right all this is just coasting off the hype based around the incredible success of the first movie and the follow-up. And when it comes to this particular feature, I'm trying to wonder to myself, the whole time, like throughout these decades, the Predator has remained largely something that has a cult-based following of fans. Okay, there's never been a situation when an announcement goes out that there's a new Predator movie coming out and people are just going like, oh shit, I gotta watch it like right this fucking minute. It's never been that way, okay? General audiences have never responded to a Predator movie like this. It has never been a multi-million dollar grossing franchise. So what is it about this movie, okay, that has earned it so much hype? Okay, what is it about this movie that I see blurbs, screaming, you know, reviews coming at me saying that this is the best Predator movie ever since the original. That is freaking high praise. And I gotta tell you something, okay, that is simply not accurate because Predator 2, which came out in 1990, is a far superior film, right? It is an entirely worthy entry in the Predator franchise. It's a better movie than Predator Prey, that's for certain. And at the time, I'm sure that, you know, when it first came out, it did get a lot of flight because it didn't follow the standard basic formula that was established in the first movie. It took the Predator to the city, which is freaking incredible. It didn't have Arnold Schwarzenegger, but hey, look, you know what? I loved it the first time I watched it. A lot of fans did. And in fact, through the years, it's only gotten even more popular. So statements like this Prey movie being the best follow-up since the original, I think is trying to rely on the fact that a lot of people just don't remember the movies that came before. Or it's maybe just banking on a new generation of followers and fans that basically don't care about the previous movies. But honestly, Predator 2 is freaking awesome. I remember I watched it, I was like, you know, in my early teens, in 1990, in fact, the movie came out in Malaysia in January of 1991, if I recall correctly, and I do recall it, right, because I watched it on the big screen. And back then, uh, you know, this was like a hard R-rated movie in America, I think in all other parts of the world. In Malaysia, it was screened for general audiences. You know, you could walk in as a kid and buy tickets to watch it. But that's also because the film was heavily edited. Okay, it was chopped up to bits. I still enjoyed it, <laughs> but I was like, freaking dying to find out what the hell was actually happening in a lot of sequences and I knew that I had to wait for a while to actually be able to get it on home video or something like that and watch it and just see the whole uncut version. Is Prey a good movie? Yeah, it is. Okay, it's very well done. It is beautifully shot. In fact, some of the scenes feel like freaking hell. They're straight out of National Geographic. And I was watching it, you know, in 4K resolution and the colors were really amazing, I gotta say, especially in all the jungle scenes. And you get animals and stuff like that. You know, like these guys on safari, the predators hunting and killing all kinds of animals out there. Uh, everything about this movie is just beautifully rendered. I don't really think that um, any of the scenes felt disjointed or out of place. Everything was actually very well put together, but you've seen everything in this film you know a hundred times before especially if you're a movie fan especially if you're a fan of horror films you know this movie is taking into account probably uh, banking on the hopes that people just 
haven't watched a lot of movies out there. You've seen stuff like this, survival horror movies like this, where a woman, you know, a female character is trying to survive against impossible odds out there in the woods, against some kind of a monstrous hulking creature or some kind of mutant. You know, Eliza Dushku was doing it like 20 years ago in Wrong Turn. Remember the first one? Also movies like The Descent, they all had the same formula. Even stuff like Dog Soldiers, you know, you take a bunch of, you know, military guys, they're out there in the woods fighting against werewolves. Okay, remember that one? That was also from 20 years ago. So stuff like this has been depicted on screen. There is nothing in this movie that you've not seen before. The only difference is just that it takes the predator character. Okay, the predator character is planted in this setting, which is actually in you know, 1700s and uh, in native American land, all right? Okay, the Predator's up against the Comanches, and uh, it, that's original for the Predator franchise, okay? It's not original in terms of stuff that's been delivered for the genre, but it's original for this particular franchise. Now, one thing that I feel is admirable is that this movie is actually aiming for a much younger audience in a sense that, you know, maybe older teenagers to young adults. And that's great because you need a franchise like Predator to survive by appealing to the younger generation out there. You need that, all right? There's stuff like, you know, Cobra Kai has been doing that on TV too. But, um, you know, one thing about that is also, well, they did try it with Alien vs. Predator, if you recall, uh, from 2007. They did have a young high school cast in there as well. Uh, although that movie was basically pretty much universally hated. I didn't think it was that bad, you know, but the setting was pretty off. You did have teenagers in that as well, but it just didn't appeal to anybody. It never got the kind of reviews that you're seeing here for Prey. But this time around, they've got a very young cast and, and they're all pretty much teenagers. But there's one thing that I did find a bit jarring. Okay, there's just one thing, okay. Uh, well, there may have been a few things, but this is the one main thing, all right. The cast is entirely Native American, and the story is taking place in the 1700s. For some reason, all right, all of them, all right, speak as though they're teenagers in modern 21st century, all right. I don't get how that's possible. It's like they're bickering and bantering with each other like teenagers of today. All right, it's like uh, they're having smart comebacks and replies. People in the 1700s, I don't care which continent of the world that you're in, I don't think they spoke that way. People didn't even used to speak like this in the 90s, okay? All right, this is very much really modern day dialogue, you know, being forced upon a, a 1700s setting, okay? <laughs> That's what it is, all right? Now, I know that it's supposed to be like a Comanche dub of this film as well. Uh, you know, and a lot of people have watched it and they said that it was great, you know, the fact that, you know, they're watching something that sounded a little bit more authentic. But having said that, uh, the main dialogue in this movie is still pretty much this kind of like teeny bopper sort of dialogue, okay? <laughs> But somehow, you know what, you know, if you can get past all that, uh, you know, the movies, like I said, is still very well executed. All right? it's, just, it's just not the best, okay? But it's a great entry. Now, I do like the Predator's more feral and primitive-like appearance in this film, and I'm sure there's going to be a ton of action figures to support this depiction as well. Definitely a couple of Funko Pops, yeah? But uh, one thing about the promotion, it says that this is the Predator's first ever hunt on Earth. Now, does that mean that it's just this particular predator's first hunt or like for the entire predator species, okay? Because I kind of thought that the predator's been coming to Earth since like the time of the Aztec civilization, right? If this was truly the first time any predator ever set foot on Earth, I kind of felt that maybe they didn't play up that aspect of it enough. Like the predator didn't seem curious enough around the species that it was encountering, like humans and stuff like that. Uh, they just could have been a little bit more in that development, I felt, you know. Definitely, I think that future versions of the predator that we saw in film were certainly more chattier, okay? I mean, they like to talk a lot, right? This predator uh, hardly said a word, hardly learned English, or more accurately, Native American. Or even French for that matter, because there are some French characters that turn up in this film. <laughs> but I don't want to get into that too much, you know, because, you know, the film's just out. You know, maybe you guys haven't watched it yet. Uh, so, yeah, you know, come back again after you've seen it and then, you know, we can discuss it further. Now, Predator movies are expected to be ultra-violent and gory. And this movie doesn't disappoint. Okay, let me tell you that, right? The kill scenes in here are pretty innovative. I like the way that the Predator's weapons were used in a lot of sequences. Uh, it's pretty great to see high-tech weaponry being used in this particular era. Uh, it's just fun, you know, and uh, a lot of the combat scenes were great too, I have to say. The hand-to-hand -hand scenes, you know, the scenes where uh, the female lead 
you know, Amber Mid Thunder is actually going up against the Predator. It's entertaining. I think that uh, she certainly holds the film up very well. She's getting a lot of accolades. People are saying that this is her breakthrough performance. I think it's well deserved. Okay, nothing about her performance seemed forced. She seemed very natural. And a lot of people are centering on the fact that this is actually, in fact, uh, maybe the first time that a female is actually going up against a Predator. Uh, well, that's not entirely true also because we did have Alice Braga. Okay, in Predators in 2010, although, I mean, she wasn't like the lead heroine because it was like, you know, being shared with Adrian Brody. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we have seen females going up against Predators before. But uh, that being said, Amber Mittanda did still put in an incredible performance and she's definitely going to be an actress to look out for in future roles. Now, I don't know if there was ever a discussion at some point that this was actually ever intended for a theatrical release. But at the same time also, I think that uh, streaming definitely would have been the better bet because I don't think a lot of people other than the hardcore fan base are actually interested in making their way down to a cinema to actually watch a new Predator movie, especially after the last one turned out, okay, 2018's The Predator, okay. That is one Predator movie that I honestly do wish, you know, did not happen okay uh yeah i mean until today i just can't understand how something that initially appeared to have so much promise turned out to be such a fucking mess okay but it did have okay a super giant predator in that one though <laughs> not as big as the predator that appears to be on the film poster for this one but yeah a much bigger predator also, when it comes to this movie, even though I said the settings and the cinematography were amazing, but I don't feel that uh, there was enough of these large-scale type sequences to actually warrant a full theatrical release. Okay, the sequences were pretty much... I mean, if you really think about it, there's nothing here that you haven't seen on a Netflix production, like even a TV production. Okay, so, I mean, I kind of felt that that was maybe lacking a bit, like that really large-scale action sequences especially the finale the finale was um to be honest with you i mean some may say that it was a bit smart okay but it felt really underwhelming you have to watch it if you haven't already uh if you have you know and you're tuning into this review let me know in the comments what you thought of the finale i thought the finale was really underwhelming okay so it lacked that big budget cinematic feel uh, you know, it just lacked that extra bit that, you know, made this something that would be entirely suitable for theatrical. But at the same time, it did get me wondering if we could ever probably someday see a Predator TV series, like an anthology series of sorts. We used to get stuff like that with the comics all the time. And, you know, you could have like a continuing story arc. Or you could have like different episodes with the Predator being in different timelines, you know, stuff like that. You know, something like the Predator needs to be brought back, but probably it will work better in this generation as... A TV or streaming production. Okay guys, so that's my review on Predator Prey. Let me know what you thought of the film in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys again real soon here on the channel with more content. Take care out there.